Hello there. I am Pat Willie, the founder and CEO of the ministry, The Gathering, when women gather, when women worship. Thanks for listening in tonight. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. I pray that the word of God will bless you. It will be straight for you and that it will transform your life. All right, let's get started in the word of God. Again, thanks for joining me. Thank you for being a part of this ministry. Thank you for your faithfulness to call in each Thursday night to hear the word of God and to participate in this gathering of women. Now, the the gathering is women from uh, across the United States, from several states that come together each Thursday night as for a time about a week, as well as prayer. And uh, I'm excited to say that our YouTube channel is up and functional. So if you miss the call or you want to refer someone to the call, have them go to my YouTube tan- channel. It's entitled Pat Willie Ministry. Pat Willie Ministry. And you may hear the recording of the teaching and the lessons there on YouTube. Again, thank you guys for being on. Thank you for your faithfulness. We're going to get started tonight as the gathering we are called to equip, inspire, and influence women to form authentic relationships with God, to experience true deliverance and freedom, to share their stories and their testimonies, and to impact the world. Our vision is as women, we will live godly, fulfilled lives, godly, fulfilled lives, thriving, just not survive. We will live our best life through the enabling power of God and through the work of grace. Let me say that again. We will live our best life through the enabling power of God and the work of grace. Now, I have a couple of updates, and we're going to get started. This is September, a brand new month, and I am just so happy that we are blessed to see another month, September. And I am believing God for blessings for you and your family during this month. And we are believing God that God has something special in store for each of us during the month of September, that your September will be blessed and you have to decree it and declare it that this is a new month of blessings for me. September is a new month of blessing for me. And so I'm excited about what God will do for us and, and say to us and how he will instruct us doing them. So tonight we're going to get started with a new series and it's entitled Maintaining focus. Again, maintaining focus. I'm just going to introduce the topic tonight, and and in the coming weeks, we're going to explore it more in depth. And so before we get started tonight, let's just have a word of prayer. Invite the Holy Spirit in to our gathering tonight and ask Him to speak to our hearts and our minds. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we honor you and we give you glory and praise and we thank you for being in our lives. We thank you that you are our God. And now God, we ask that you would come into the gathering tonight. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would breathe on us new strength, new revelation, new insight, and new truth. And we ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God, after be hearing truth, we pray that we would be people that would apply the truth that you're sharing with us. And we ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So again tonight, we are going to start with the topic, maintaining focus, maintaining focus. Now, I want to make a statement, and you can tell me whether you agree or disagree. You can turn your home 
and you you can say I agree you can say it to yourself or disagree. But here's the statement. Distractions are the greatest threat to living godly. Agree or disagree? Distractions are the greatest threat to living godly. And it's just not negative distractions, but distractions of all types. Life brings problems and circumstances that can distract us and pull us away from those things that are most meaningful. And as long as we live, there will always be things that are competing for our attention and focus. As women, we have many roles and responsibilities. And to maintain focus is not always easy for us. To maintain focus is not easy most of the time. For we are constantly encroached by external and internal distractions. And it becomes more and more challenging each moment to stay focused and to stay on track. And so when I was praying about a lesson for us to of fart, I heard so clearly, maintaining focus. Maintaining focus. So let me say it again. Maintaining focus on the things that matter is a challenge for most of us. Want to wonder, you know what I'm saying? Our minds want to slip off and, and think things and really felt are all over the place sometimes. But we have to learn how to discipline our mind. And we have to learn how, through the word of God, to maintain our focus. So how do we maintain our focus? Well, there are several methods in doing so, and I'm not going to hold you long tonight. We're going to go through this, and in the coming weeks, we're going to, again, go into it and more in depth. But I just looked up. Maintaining focus. I I went to Google and I Googled it. Maintaining focus. How do you maintain focus? And so let's just call it the Google way. Here's what Google recommends. If you want to maintain focus, the first thing you need to do is get rid of distractions. Do I agree with that? Yes. Partly. Because there are some distractions, there are some things that circumstances that are, we have in our lives that we can't get rid of. The next thing Google said is limit your intake of coffee. So what it's saying is limit the number of stimuli in your life. Then the third thing Google says is put a lock on social media. My Lord. Now that's one for all of us. To put a lock on social media. And, and, and you know, when your screen time comes up, I think it comes up like Sunday sometimes and it says, hello there. And I'm just paraphrasing it. Your screen time was up 10% this week and you say, oh my Lord, did I spend all that time looking at my phone? And you know, and it may be justified because I use my phone as a reference. So when I'm looking up scripture, when I'm doing, uh, work for my school, I go to my phone, or if the Lord will drop something in my spirit, and I'll word that scripture quickly. You know what I'm saying? We used to pull out our old concordance and our old Bible dictionaries, and we try to find a scripture that way. But now we have our phone. All you have to do is know one or two words from the scripture. You type in scripture, you type in the first couple words that you know, and here's all these scriptures. And all you have to do is look through and find the one that the Holy Spirit has left. Laid on your heart. So to put a complete lock on social media may not be the thing to do, but to put some limitations on it is certainly a way of eliminating some of the distractions in your life. Then the next thing Google says is fuel your body, eat properly. Then it says for mind health, get enough rest. It goes on to say that smart goals start with the end in mind. Okay, what is it that you want to accomplish today? Or what is it that you want to accomplish within the next five minutes? Or what is it that you want to accomplish within the next hour? Start with the end in mind and set 
smart goals. We're talking about eliminating distractions. Okay. And then the last thing I thought was pretty smart on Google. It said, be more mindful of your present state. Be more mindful of your present state. And I liken this to my body. And some of you may can identify with this. But a thought can hit my mind. And before I know it, I'm into all kinds of things that may not have to be negative things that is related to that. And and my mind is just going and going and going. He said, but be more mindful of your present state. So you have to call yourself at hand. Wait a minute. Wait wait a minute. You have to talk to yourself. Ask yourself, what am I doing? What am I thinking about? Mm -hmm. What things am I currently engaging in that will not help me reach my goals? What things am I currently engaged in that will help me reach my goal? So being mindful of your present state and the things that are going on in your life and to be able to eliminate the distractions in your life. If Google has a way, surely the scripture gives us instructions on maintaining our focus. And so we're going to look at that picture tonight. And it comes from even chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Again, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. And so it says in verse 1, Wherefore, seeing that we are encompassed by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and he is now set down at the right hand of God. Now to know the history of this chapter, you have to look back at chapter 11 in Hebrews, and you know this very familiar scripture. Now faith is a substantive thing, oh far, and the evidence of things not seen. That chapter goes on to give us what we call the fall of faith. So it talks about all these biblical characters, these people that actually live, and it talks about the degree of their faith and how they will believe in God for some things, how they trust in God for some things. And so there's example after example of some uh, and what they went through and what they endured by how they were able to keep the faith because they maintained their focus and their focus was on God was able to do it. And so he starts out with chapter 12, verse 1, say, the witnesses are all around you that you, when you consider scripture rather, then all the things that the people in scripture, Abraham, (laughs) Isaac, (laughs) Sarah, Jacob, Joseph, all those things that they went through well, is a witness for us. If they are written for our example that after they suffered and all the things that they went through, they were able to maintain their focus. So we are able to do the same with the help of God and the work of grace in our lives. So there's a list there. He said in verse 1 through 2, he says, the first thing to maintaining your focus is know that someone has gone through what you're going through. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Know that there are witnesses that it can be there. Number two is hold on to the promises of God through faith. Hold on to the promises of God through faith. Whatever God has told you, glory, whatever promise that you have identified in Scripture, you got to repeat those promises. You got to rehearse those promises. You got to let the word become your defense against negative thoughts and negative thought patterns. Because you have to say what the word says about it. Because the enemy will come to cause you to be distracted through fear, through doubt, and all of those things. But we have to hold on to the promise of God 
you say? And we have to remind ourselves, what did God say about this situation? What has God promised me about this situation? And in doing so, we can maintain our focus. You've got to realize that you're in a race for life. You are in a race. We are in a race for life. And one of the tricks of the enemy is to get us focused on all the negative things of life to derail us or to get us off course. And so we have to learn to maintain our focus. We have to learn how to deal with distractions. And one of the things is that you are in a race. Glory be to God. And so in a race, he says, you got to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily sets you back. Okay. In other words, he says, it's too hard to maintain your focus in the race. You got to remove everything that will weigh you down. You got to kick everything off of the track that will slow you down. One translation says, and I love it, it reads, Strip down to the bare necessities because runners don't need much clothing. Oh, my God. Does that not give us a very vivid picture of what it means to not be distracted, what it means to stay in the race? Strip down to the bare necessities because runners don't need much clothing in a race. The next thing is distractions are, as I said, sent to weigh you down. All distractions. Those that we have control over and those that we don't. And we know sin is a thing that will get us off course and will completely steal our focus. Sin will get us off course and completely steal our focus. But he says something in verse 2 and I'm going to read that again. He says, looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, who was for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, the signs and the chain, and is now set down at the right hand of God. And so what he said is, you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. That's the next step in maintaining focus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Jesus is the author. And the finisher of our faith. He is the Alpha and the Omega of our lives. And if we're going to maintain focus, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. He is orchestrating our lives. Even when distractions come in, we have to refocus and we have to remind ourselves that Jesus is the conductor. And when you think of an orchestra, and how he stands before those that are playing the instrument. And he knows when to bring in the drums. He knows when to bring in the flutes. He knows when to bring in the violin. And at the right time, Lord, he brings those things in. Glory be to God. And when we keep our eyes on Jesus, glory be to God, and allow him to orchestrate our lives, he knows exactly what is needed when it's needed. And we have to trip God, fill it with the outcome of our life. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. We have to trip God to manage the outcome. Because why? He is the author. He's the thing that began it. And he is the finisher of our faith. And this is what it says. You guys know this scripture in Philippians 1 and 6. And the confidence of this very thing. He that began a good work in you is able to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. The work that God has started in you, he is able to complete it. Don't be distracted about what's going on. So many things that are inundating. Oh my God, you watch the news and it's just overwhelming of all the things that are going on. You know, there's floods, there's disasters, you know, it'll say, there's racism, there's politics, all of these things come to encroach on our lives and come as the sectors to get us off course. The glory be to God. But Jesus is the answer. He will keep us in perfect peace for those whose mind is stated for him. So we have to keep our eyes 
on Jesus because he is the conductor of our lives. Jesus had trouble just as we have. The scripture says he had a cross to bear, but the scripture said he endured it, despising the shame. How was he were able to do it? The scripture said he looks ahead to the joy that was coming. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. He looked ahead to the joy that was coming. And I'm telling you tonight, glory be to God. Whatever's going on in your life, you trust God with the outcome and you look to the blessing that's coming as a result of that. The blessing that's coming, the joy that's coming. You better tell yourself, joy's coming. You better tell yourself, joy's coming. I may be in this situation right now, but joy is coming. Glory be to God. And you guys know this scripture. It says we can may endure for a night. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. But joy in the morning. So we must consider that what Jesus suffered, the cross that he had to bear, the shame of being crucified. The scripture says, cursed is everyone that hangs upon a tree. Jesus had to do that. But the scripture said he despised the shame. Glory be to God. He looked to the joy that was before him. He looked to the promise of God that was before him. And because he endured, glory be to God. And he didn't allow himself to become distracted. And even though there are many times that distractions come, and even on the cross, glory be to God. He turned to the Father and said, if it's your will, let this cup pass. But then he said, nevertheless, oh, not my will, but your will be done. Refusing to be distracted, committed to the ways of God and the things that God wants to do. Because when we come, we're in our minds and our hearts will be drawn away with distraction. Look for the joy that's coming. Look for the joy that's coming. Say to your current circumstances, I must stay focused. You see? Because there is the eternal word of joy that's coming. Not just in the world to come, but in this life too. There is a promise of joy that's coming. We have to look to the promises of God in Scripture. Glory be to God. If Jesus suffered, we're going to suffer. Glory be to God. But because Jesus reigns, we also will reign. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus. And if he endured, so can we. He went through, so can we. God has given us the grace. He will call grace multiply and abound in all in order that we are able to make through the things that we're going through so that we don't have to succumb to the negative thoughts. We don't have to succumb and be drawn away with the distractions in our lives, but we will keep our lives aligned. We will keep our lives congruent with scripture in order that we may grow with you, receive the promise of God. I want to close tonight with a very familiar song, and it's a hymn song. Some I mean, of you might know it. And uh, as I was studying, God gave me this song. I want to read the lyrics to you. And it's come from uh, the hymn note, as I said. It's about keeping your eyes on Jesus. It says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Also, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see? There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look into his wonderful face. All the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you. He's promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go on to a world that is dying, it's perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, over to God. Not full in his wonderful face. Then the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we look for your the hill from where our help comes from tonight. Our help comes from you. We fix our eyes. We turn our eyes upon you. We look into your face. 
Well, we need a God. Well, you're the only help we know. We stand on your promises tonight. Glory be to God that you will help us. You will deliver us. And you are the author and the finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name. And all the things that have been sent to distract us. Glory be to External and internal things. Things that we're struggling with on the inside. God, in the name of Jesus, we cast those things at your feet. In Jesus' name, glory be to God. And we declare and decree that we are not distracted, that we are maintaining some senses because we're keeping our eyes upon you. In Jesus' name, we give you glory for our glory be to God. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, ladies, that ends our lesson for tonight. We're going to pick up the lesson next week. We're going to talk about the risk of distractions. We're going to go deeper every week. We're going to talk about what does it mean to turn your face away from God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To turn your back to him. We're going to talk about the repercussions of, of doing such. But we're also going to talk about the blessings of keeping our eyes on Jesus. Of turning your eyes upon Jesus. Hello there. This is Pat Willie again. Thanks for listening in to this week's Bible's lesson. I know you were blessed by the word as I was. Join us again next week as we gather to learn more about the word of God. Blessings now. Have a blessed week. In Jesus' name, amen.